When Gregor Samsa woke one morning from troubled dreams, he found himself transformed right there in his bed into some sort of monstrous insect. I don't have uh, a nice book cover uh, for the Metamorphosis because I got this Norton Anthology of Short Fiction, but I do have this cute little uh, domino tile with some ladybugs on it, and maybe that's the closest thing we can get to a good image for the Metamorphosis today. One of the most probably iconic, famous opening lines of literature uh, in any language, in this case German, it's the beginning of Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis. Uh, a sort of a short story where the uh, the main character, Gregor Samsa, wakes up one morning and he's transformed into a bug. Um, very strange opening, very shocking. Uh, you know, some of my students find this very freaky, disturbing, perhaps. Um, so why am I talking about this? It's a big change from the children's literature that I've been talking about recently. Uh, and once again, I think it's, it's I've chosen it to sort of address what we're all living through at this point with uh, COVID-19. Uh, we're all trapped in our homes, in some, so to speak, uh, much as Gregor Samsa is after he's transformed into a bug. Uh, and I think it's a really uh, apropos story if you get a chance to read it. Gregor Samsa, before his transformation, he's a, a traveling salesman. Uh, and the day he wakes up as an insect, his... Uh, you know, obviously his, his entire world changes. He can't work anymore. He can't get out into the world, uh, interact with people, sell what he has to sell. He can't do his job anymore. Uh, it's a situation many people are going through right now, uh, it, you know, to varying degrees one way or another. Um, uh, and in Gregor Samsa's case, uh, you know, he's it's very troubling for him at first. He's very upset that he can't go to work. Uh, he's frantic that he's not going to be able to earn the money that he needs to to earn in order to keep his family living in comfort. They live in a what, in my mind, always seems like uh, an apartment that's a sort of, they have a kitchen, a sitting area, and some bedrooms, maybe three bedrooms. Uh, I guess for the logic of the story, it's gotta be four. And the point is that when Gregor Samson like, can't go to work, he can't earn money, the money that he needs to support his, his two aging parents and his sister. Um, you know, so within hours of him not showing up at work, his his boss calls. His boss comes to banging on the door, demanding to you know where Gregor Samsa is, why he's not coming to work, screaming through the door that the, that uh, if Gregor doesn't make it to work today, don't bother coming in tomorrow. His his career is over. And at first, Gregor Gregor, even though he knows he's aware that he's transformed into this insect, that his entire world has changed in an instant. The conditions of his existence have changed. Uh, he's still clinging to the life he used to have, still uh, desperate to to do what he used to do, to say, oh, I'm going to get better tomorrow. You know, it's like that Monty Python scene um, where, the, where the guy gets turned into a frog, and he says, oh, I got, yeah, he says the witch turned me into a frog, and he's, he's clearly not a frog, and he says, oh, well, I got better. Uh, that's what Gregor Samsa thinks is going to happen to him. Uh, of course it won't. He's in this first section of the story. He's not coming to terms with the fact that he is now an insect. He's never going to go to work again. His life is completely different. Um, and you know, perhaps this is something that can be meaningful to us right now. For many people, uh, whether it's a feeling of optimism or terror, that the entire you know economic situation is going to be completely different. That the conditions of work and labor. Uh, of income, of, of how money is distributed, uh, will perhaps change. You know, for many, this is very comforting, very exciting, uh, but it's also terrifying. It's scary. What will life be like you know, after self-isolation, after things go back to normal, uh, if they do? Right? What, what will that mean? Uh, what are we learning from self-isolation, from the fact that so many people's jobs are not at all necessary? that people can live and actually find perhaps more uh, satisfaction when they're forced to stay home from work and find other ways to occupy their time. They're given the opportunity to to do things they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Uh, you know, there's all these stories about people learning to bake. Everybody's baking bread now. Um, you know, that's, you know, something totally unexpected. and Nobody expected that this was going to happen in 2020, that suddenly people, because of a global virus are going to learn to bake. That we're going to be seriously considering new mean, new methods of social organization, universal basic income. A lot of people are very excited 
are very optimistic that this is coming. I know I am. That universal basic income could be a positive result of what's happening now. That we realize that um, collectively we need to support each other more. Uh, people are doing it informally, but let's take that next step and make it a uh, you know, political decision to structure into our, our, our governments to support everyone with a basic income. Um, so how does this all relate back to uh, Gregor Samsa? Well, Gregor Samsa is the only one in his family who's earning money, and suddenly he can't. And he believes that his sister can't work. He believes that his parents are too old and frail to do anything, to take care of the home without his help. Um, and over time, as everyone comes to accept the fact that Gregor Samsa is no longer the breadwinner, no longer getting out there in the world, that he is now uh, an invalid, he's, he's forced, stuck in his room, for always, He's, he never leaves his room by the end of the, the story, uh, before he dies. Um, um, but suddenly the rest of his family is stepping up. His sister is getting out there, she's working. Uh, his parents are taking care of the house. His father, who is a former soldier and is living like a broken man, suddenly he has to step up and he, he's now wearing his uniform uh, and he's gaining confidence. Um, and the family is forced to take in lodgers, renters, rent out one of the rooms in the, in the house and over time these these lodgers they, they sort of mistreat the family and eventually the father stands up to them and says you know we we don't need this we don't need your money we don't need your abuse you leave uh, and so gregor's the transformation that gregor goes through terrifying and tragic uh, and ultimately fatal as it is has this unexpected consequence for the rest of the family that they're able to find a new way of being uh, where they're all contributing but they're also living a better life than they were before um, but there's a sinister side to that because by the end of the story Gregor is dead Gregor whose life as a traveling salesman you learn at the beginning of the story occupied all his time he barely spends any time with his family he has no social life he just works comes home, eats and sleeps. That's his whole life. And he was clinging to that. He was saying, this, this is the only existence for me. And once he's transformed to a bug and he lets that go, he realizes that there, there's more to his life. You know, although, albeit, you know, as an insect, it's climbing on the walls and eating garbage, but there's he's, he's more satisfied living, living that life than he was as a traveling salesman. Now, Gregor's transformation is really the extension of the life he was already living, where he had no life. He, as I said, he worked, ate and slept. That was his whole life. Uh, and so he was like like an insect in some sense. He was just a creature of, of routine and impulse and habits uh, without much free will uh, or much of an intellectual life. Uh, and in fact, only after he's transformed into the, this, this bug, however you want to interpret what this, this insect transformation is, that's when he starts realizing what his family does during the day. They read to each other. The sister plays her violin. Uh, I think it's a violin, um, but she, she plays music, and at first she plays music for Gregor to entertain him, and suddenly he has a richer inner life than he ever had uh, before when he was just uh, a workaholic. But as I said, the story has a sinister, sinister side uh, when it comes to the family stepping up and transforming. They go through a metamorphosis of their own, but it's really the sister who starts to take on all the burdens that Gregor used to have. At the end of the story, uh, the parents... You know, eye her and see how she is transformed um, and they start putting all this pressure on her to be the breadwinner and this is the final lines of the story as they were conversing in this way Herr and Frau Samsa were struck almost as one while observing their daughter who was growing over more vivacious by the thought that despite all the torments that had made her cheeks grow pale she had recently blossomed into a beautiful voluptuous girl Growing quieter now and communicating with one another almost unconsciously by an exchange of glances they thought about how it would soon be time to find her a good husband, and when they arrived at their destination, it seemed to them almost as confirmation of their new dreams and good intentions when their daughter swiftly sprang to her feet and stretched her young body. Uh, that idea of stretching her body uh, uh, parallels some, a description of Gregor earlier when he's transformed into an insect and he stretches his body. So she's gone through a transformation of her own, but the parents see this as an opportunity for their own comfort uh, to enrich themselves, or at least to to go back to the lifestyle they were living, where they didn't work, where they didn't really contribute. Uh, you know, you don't have to look very far to think about uh, leaders who see uh, 
who worry that they'll lose their power, their comfort, their wealth. Uh, business leaders, political leaders, uh, who will lose this power and this advantage um, if suddenly other people realize they don't have to work like Gregor, that there are better alternatives, that the system can be better. Um, and so the metamorphosis, the story, you know, Kafka is, is often pegged as a real pessimist, as someone who uh, looks at the absurdity of life and uh, the way that um, people are really not in control of their destiny. Uh, tragedy can strike and the world doesn't always make sense, um, you know, which is a feeling a lot of people are going through now. But Kafka was also an optimist. Kafka recognized that the world is absurd but he always found ways to, in his stories, he always finds ways to look on the bright side, to see positivity, potential that comes from that change. For Kafka, a big part of that was the ability for people to, or the desire for people to reach out to other people, that even in the, the most dire, isolating circumstances, people will reach out to other people uh, as much as possible. And there, there's a certain sense of faith uh, that connection is, is always possible, despite the fact that the, these protagonists uh, fail to communicate, but they're always trying. There's always a hope that true communication through true connection will be possible in these absurd moments, during these, these tragic moments. And I think that's a feeling that everybody, uh, so many people are experiencing right now, that everyone's trying to reach out to people more than they, they would have otherwise, more than they have in a long time. Uh, I think that's the kind of faith that, that Kafka had in, in people and their ability to, to reach out to each other in moments of crisis, in moments of, uh, of incomprehensibility. When things were, when the world is impossible to understand, people still reach out for each other and try to create meaning through those connections. That change. And I think metamorphosis, that story, is really such a, such a great story, such a classic, because it really plays with the idea of how sudden unexpected change um, can have positive results. But also, as I said, at the end, the sinister side of the parents starting to see where they can reclaim the past, reclaim the old ways of doing things that weren't working, uh, and you to be vigilant that people aren't, uh, that people are taking the positive changes, that people are moving in a better direction after, uh, you know, something unexpected happens like a global virus. Uh, global plague. Um, so, so you know, you have to take uh, take heed of how they they're eyeing their daughter and seeing how they can put all the pressure on her uh, while they go back to things as they were, not necessarily the ideal way of moving forward.